Hey angels, welcome back to Unique Mystery. So today I'm doing a Mother's Day collab that was started by Kara from Mama 4. So a group of us will be doing this collab who all have lost our mamas. So in my video, I'm going to be discussing like five parts of losing my mama. First thing I'm going to discuss is how and when I lost my mama. So next month in June will make exactly two years since I lost my mama. Okay, and two years ago, right around this time in May, my mama started getting sick all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Uh, everything happened so fast. She just got sick in May. And then we, she had a doctor's appointment. I'm still not even ready to talk about everything. And I still can't even say certain things. Because I don't know, like if I say certain words, then it triggers me and I'll start crying. So certain things I still can't say. But anyway, she got sick in May all of a sudden, you know, and then we took her to her doctor's appointment. From there, it was just so hard in the hospital. You know, her first doctor's appointment, the doctor came in. They did some tests and just basically said she's about to, she's about to pass. Just like that, you know, basically from the info he told her. So it was very, very hard. Very, very difficult, of course. Um... So that's how I lost my mama. That's the beginning of everything. And then by June, June 25, June 25th uh, is when she passed. So the next thing I'm going to discuss is how it made me felt. It's undescribable undescribable it's it's the worst thing that has ever ever happened to me in my entire life and of course I'm still dealing with it and I think I will be dealing it dealing with it as long as I live I was very, very close to my mom. I saw her almost every day. I lived with her for almost all of my life. We used to be together all the time, go places together, shop together. You know, go to uh, go to eat together, everything. So, not being able to do that. Oh my God, that is like it's hard. It's very un undescribable. <laughs> To be with someone all the time. And to have this person in your corner and to know that they will never, ever leave you. And then
one day without a choice. They have to leave. Like, it's nothing you can do. It's nothing you can do. They have to go. Um, you can never prepare yourself for it. Like, no matter how much you know that one day this person has to go, you will never be able to prepare yourself for it. So, since, since she left, my life changed, like, I cannot, like, I can't control my emotions like I used to, um, when, when I go in, uh, stores, like, where we used to shop at together, I just start crying, and a lot of other things happen to me now that is just out of my control. And um, I can get triggered by the simplest things. I can just have a thought all of a sudden about her or something that she went through that I wasn't able to do anything about. And it kills me. It, it really kills me. Um, not being able to do anything. I just felt helpless. Like I, I felt like I... I was just there and I never ever had that feeling because I've always did the best that I could for my mother anytime she needed me but during this time I was there by her side but it was like of course I couldn't save her I couldn't save her this time So, that was hard. Um, because God was ready for her. And when God is ready, there's nothing you can do. I guess that's why during that time I started loving the song when Jesus says yes nobody can say no I got the real meaning of that song during that time because I was like that's so true because I prayed and prayed and prayed and did all I could I was by her side I was in the hospital sleeping on the floor with her And there was nothing, no matter what I did, that could save her. So, I said, Jesus is saying yes. He's saying yes, that he wants her and he needs her now. And it's her time. So, when Jesus says yes, Nobody can say no. And that means at that time, Jesus was ready for my mom. And nothing I could do could get in the way of that. Okay, so the third thing I want to discuss is who was my mom. Who my mom was, okay? My mother was... A fun person she had a 
um, personality like no other. Um, it was funny, like telling her things and being around her because she had this reaction that w would always make you laugh like no other person. And she was very loyal. She stuck by me through thick and thin. Uh, when I was when I was young, I had to stay in the hospital a lot because I was sick. And she was always there. And some people say, of course she's going to be there. She's your mom. But all moms are not there. It's their choice still, you know. Some moms are not there for their kids. So having your mom there for you is a blessing. And my mama was always there for me. Always. She never ever left my side when I was sick in the hospital. No matter how hard it got, she never left my side. So she was a very loyal person. She was very funny. And she would do anything that she could. And very protective. A very godly person who believed in God. And I'm so happy that she believed in God. Okay. Next thing I want to discuss is what she meant to me. Basically, she meant the world to me. And when I lost her, I lost a part of myself. And I lost it. Like, I, I lost it, basically. Um... I see things differently now. I don't know. It's just, it's very hard. And I think it's always going to be hard. I don't think it gets any easier. I mean, some people say it gets easier. But... To be honest, I don't think this is going to get easier. Because I still... I still get triggered a lot. I still cry a lot. I miss her all the time. I still lose it from time to time. So, I think this is going to last as long as I live. And to be honest, I do not, um, I don't, well, I was going to say I don't know how I got through it. I kind of don't know how I got through it, but some ways was having my husband by my side having my sister to talk to and mostly prayer praying to God those are the ways that I got through it and those are the ways that I'm still getting through it uh But 
I don't think it's ever gonna go away, so. It's just different ways of learning how to cope with it. And the last thing I wanna discuss about this is how I cope. Well, basically, I already said how I cope. Number one, I pray. I pray a whole lot. I cry a whole lot. Just when I need to cry, I cry. I look at, I look at pictures which I don't have a whole lot of pictures to look at because she was the type of person that didn't like to take pictures. But I have this one picture that is my favorite of her. And for some reason that picture, the first time I got that picture, I used to look at that picture and say I loved that picture and I said I have to look I have to take good care of this picture because one day I may need it because I know she don't take a lot of pictures and it came true years later I kept up with that picture all the time there was other pictures a few other pictures even my baby pictures that I've lost but I always somehow managed to keep that picture of my mom and it was true that years later I needed the picture. So I cope by a lot of prayer, by uh, talking out things with my husband, my sister. Uh, And spending time alone to think about memories, good memories, of course bad memories come up too, but um, I try to think mostly of the good memories. That's how I cope. And one time, well, last year, last year, I didn't want to hear anything about Mother's Day because it hurts so bad. This year, I, I started off saying I don't want to hear anything about Mother's Day, but then I changed my mind. A few days ago because I was like I still have a mother I still have a mama but she's just in a different place she's just not here anymore for me to see but I still have a mama because a lot of times she lets me know that she's still there in my dreams Sometimes I see things, sometimes I can hear her telling me things, so I still have a mama, just not in the same way, okay? So, that's one thing that you can say if your mom has passed. You still have a mama, but just not in the same way. It's just in a different way now. So, um, that's how, that's how I cope and that's who I, oh, can't talk, that's how I get through everything, but it's not easy, it's not easy at all. 
and today is Mother's Day and I do want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mama because she's still here and from this point on I'm going to act like I still have my mama because I feel that I still have her. I feel her around me. I hear things that she's telling me. I dream that she's there. I knew that she came and visit me one day because I was sleeping and when I woke up I couldn't open my eyes and I felt someone laying beside me nobody was home but me and I felt someone laying beside me and I could not open my eyes I had my eyes closed and I could not open them but I could hear everything around me I could feel everything around me and I felt the person getting up from laying beside me and walking through my house and leaving and all during this time, I could not open my eyes and I was trying my best to open them. I could not open my eyes until the person disappeared. Then my eyes opened and I was so afraid because at first I was like, who was this? But when I was dreaming, I was dreaming of my mama. So I was like, was this her or was this actually somebody else? So I, I started going through my house searching and I didn't find anything and the door was still locked so it had to be her. So she actually came and visited me. So she's still there but just in a different way. I still have a mama and even though it's hard because she's not here anymore. Um, for me to see in the usual way, she is still here. So I'm happy that she's still here. So that's it for this Mother's Day collab. And I want to say to anybody who has lost their mama, I'm not going to tell you it gets better, but I'll tell you that you'll find different ways to cope with it in your own way. So thanks angels. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment, and share. And I will see you angels in my next video. Bye.